Hello YouTubers, this is the Nubifier and welcome to my hands-on review of the Verpal T50 Mongoose controller set. The opinions expressed here are my own, even though I was sent this hardware to review. This channel's been about no bullshit for two years, which is why Verpal said they wanted my review. I was specifically instructed to pull apart the things that I didn't like and highlight the good points. This way they can offer a better product in the future and you the potential customer can make a more informed choice. Let's begin. As a PC gamer, I've always looked for the gear that suits my game. The gear that won't plateau my skill and won't limit my enjoyment. It became very clear to me after trying practically all controller configurations that a dual joystick configuration was the right controller model for me. That led me to asking Okona to make me a custom left molded Warthog grip, which is what I became known for, and that video is probably how Verpal found me in the first place. As a reviewer, I'm harder to impress because of my previous experience, and I'm going to be a lot more critical about negative things in my review. I've spent hundreds of hours playing with one of the better controllers on the market, and I've gotten comfortable with it, so I have a higher than average expectation. Verpal was formed February 2016 by Andre, a longtime flight sim enthusiast. After eight months of researching and testing, a final prototype was ready and production began. The VPC team now stretches to Belarus, Russia, and the UK. Their focus is to offer a superior sim product at a reasonable price. The individual parts are hand assembled, tested, and then packaged. The unboxing had some good points and some low points. My entire order was shipped as three boxes taped together, two complete sticks and the mounts. This was pretty risky because the three boxes could become separated and could have caused loss in transit. The desk mounts were in a box that was taped to the top of the parcel. They were slightly dented upon arrival, even though they were very well protected internally. They're functional and the cosmetic bend was very easy to fix. I didn't need a replacement even though I was offered one. This could be very easily avoided in the future by shipping all of what I received in a single large box. The T50 grip is polymer cast with a solid fit and finish. It's lightweight with clean seams and held together with 2.5 mm hex cap screws. I found only one screw that needed to be tightened after shipping. The buttons on the T50 are definitely its strong point. They're very well laid out and easy to reach, mostly because of the adjustable hand rest. Having smaller hands, I was never able to fully use the fixed rest on the Warthog. The T50 rest keeps my fingers within easy reach of the buttons without reaching. I can't say that the T50 grip has taken the top title away from the Warthog replica, but it's a very strong upper contender. The T50 grip won't give you that same authentic feel, but I actually prefer the very tactile feedback I get from the buttons, which also require very light force to use. This feedback to the user in the form of a tactile click is critical. You get the feedback from all buttons except for the brake lever, which is actually a third analog axis. It's very satisfying and I would now miss it when using something else. The grip is front and backwards compatible with the Warthog because Verpal has decided to use the same plug. I need to stress that the pins within this connector are very tiny. You should take your time and deliberately align the plug and then seat it. I think this connector is a weak point of the design, but I understand why it's used and I really like the options of being able to mix and match. The grip mounts rock solid to the base by way of a threaded collar that'll let you adjust the clock angle but won't slip once tightened. The input layout offers many options to the pilot. In total, there are two eight-way hat switches, four four-way hat switches, two two-way rockers, 10 push buttons, two two-stage triggers, two safety flip triggers, and an analog brake lever with a second digital button trigger halfway through the pull. If they were to offer the T50 grip in the future, cast in metal for a higher price, it would easily take the throne away from the Warthog. The T50 base is a two-axis user serviceable unit offering many customization options. Its billet machine parts ride fully on ball bearings, providing a nearly maintenance-free experience that won't bind. No joke, this unit actually became smoother after several hours of use. The sensors are made in-house by VPC. They're contactless and they can detect axis movements of 0.006 degrees. Mechanically, this gimbal design is superior to the plastic ball and cup design of the Warthog. In the four years that I've been using Warthogs, I've needed to replace two bases. I take really good care of my gear and I was forced to replace the broken bases at my own personal expense. The double cam arrangement in this gimbal has become the standard in higher stakes because of its reliability. Initially, I didn't like this base at all. I flew for several hours trying to become used to it. Frustrated, I contacted an org mate who I knew had experience with a Warthog and who owns a VKB which has a similar gimbal to the T50. He confirmed that unlike a T16000M which is plug and play, 
Controllers of this caliber come with customization options for a reason. He said that it's normal to spend one or two hours changing the cams and springs until you achieve the perfect motion. The base comes with three cams and three springs. There's a cam with no center bump, there's a cam with a pronounced center bump, and there's one between that's mounted by default. The behavior that I didn't like was increasing resistance as I moved further from center. No matter how I set the spring tension, I couldn't get used to the higher force required to move the stick to the edges. I was worried that I'd never get used to it and that I would end up back with my warthogs. Not exactly an ideal way for me to start this review. The shape of the cams will tell you exactly what to expect. If the outer edges angle up sharply, you're going to get a stiffer progressive resistance. If the outer edges are mostly flat, you're going to get a more linear resistance. I've prepared a full teardown demonstrating a cam and spring swap. That video is linked up for you right now and it's also linked in the description. As soon as I found my right combination, instantly the T50 base offered me the experience I was used to, which is a great relief. Being a high-end controller, these options and adjustments are needed to offer the pilot exactly what they need. Adding extension collars will raise the grip, increasing control by needing a wider travel. You shouldn't add length to the lever without increasing the tension, which is a major limitation of the Warthog base. This is why there are two adjustment preloads on the T50 and three choices of spring. Both axes are fully independent, which gives you the choice of having a different cam and spring profile on each axis. The base can be completely torn down with a 2.5, 3 and 4 mm Allen driver. You'll also need a flathead screwdriver to adjust the spring preload. The VPC sensor tracks very well, resulting in the most minor input changes being translated into game. This is something an entry level stick like the T16000M can't do because of the free play associated with the cheaper plastic design. The Verpal desk mount is actually remarkable for its price. They require a 6mm Allen and a 13mm wrench. You could technically mount them on the very edge. I found it better to use the entire length of the mount, allowing the vertical section to rest on the desk edge. This is the best way to ensure they won't move and provide better stability. Normally, the mounts require at least 12cm of lip and they can safely accommodate a table from 5 to 50mm in thickness. I suggest that most glass tables wouldn't be suitable, and also very thin tables may not offer a solid base for the types of force that you may use. The mounts hold the base away from the desk, allowing you to use any length of extension without hitting your hand. The mount is also long enough to allow you to set your perfect height, regardless of what extensions you use. It's modular, relying on a screw and cap to secure to the table. I added a felt pad to the cup, which added a level of grip and protection against damage. I often move my mounts off to the side when I know I won't be gaming for a while. I'm able to do this in about 10 seconds per side, giving me full access to my desk. For ease of alignment, I've used a paint marker to set the correct position as quick reference. Once secured, I was actually expecting some flex and I was impressed when it resisted the load and remained solid. The Verbal mounts are the real deal and a true budget alternative to the Monster Tech mounts that I'd been using. Final thoughts and impressions. I've loved my dual warthogs, but I knew that owning them meant that I had to accept that eventually the gimbal would probably fail again and I would need to replace it again. After investing the time into tuning my cams and springs, the Verpal gimbal offers me a better frictionless motion with a more satisfying experience. I'm now excited to fly again knowing that these gimbals won't break if I abuse them a little bit and that the sensor won't plateau my skill cap. I still have everything that was excellent about my warthog conversion, but with stronger customizable internals, at a better price that I could get by piecing together my previous conversion with the mounts. So hopefully after all that, you got the impression that I'm happy with this product. And now for the good news. Verpal is offering this community an unlisted link for the Nubifier bundle, which is two mounts, two bases, and two grips, which is exactly like what I'm using now. The actual price changes daily with the exchange rate. Please check for that link in the description for the current price. The custom link will reduce your cart by 50 euro, which works out to be approximately $70 US. Thank you very much for spending your time with me. If you enjoyed this review and got something out of it, please consider subscribing for future content. Please share the video link with a friend who might be interested. Fly safe and I'll see you in the verse.